welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to make a chuck tightener. Chuck tightener, I guess. Is that official term in machining? Anyways, for this uh, chuck down here. So I've been using, um, I don't think this actually came with one of these. I'm not sure. If it is, I can't find it. Um, so I used the one from my mini lathe. And the, the thing is, as I've talked before about, I really have to, to move this forward because this hits it. So what I decided to do is to make one of these um, out of some aluminum. So I cut this down on the lathe. And one of the things I did is I uh, punched a center hole in it with the on the lathe so I could um, center it. And then I went in and I just created a simple G-code program to pocket out around basically a square because that's all this is, about a 7.6 millimeter, millimeter square. And so that's what I'm going to do here. And then on the other side, I'm going to probably carve out uh, a hex or something like that so I can use it in a, in a ratchet. So uh, let's go ahead and see how this comes out. I'm using a 2.1 millimeter uh, fluted bit here to cut this and I think I'm taking a quarter inch by two millimeters a second so I'm really not sure how this is going to go so I might have to do some fine tuning but uh, let's fire this up and see what happens Okay, so we're back from the time lapse, and maybe you caught it in the um, time lapse, but I really screwed up. Well, at least screwed up on my cam operation. So, up in the corner, I'm going to run the cam simulation. I think probably up there. And one of the things, so so I thought this was going to be a quick, easy, um, you know, just to, you know, run the code and you know few minutes later have this done because this is not too too big and actually about four hours later I had to stop it because what I forgot if you will is kind of a long story short it would make a quarter millimeter cut come up have to clear the part quarter millimeter quarter millimeter cut all the way around four times and then repeat that because I thought you know because I was going through this trying to get a bunch of stuff done at once that it would cut a whole profile come up clear the tool cut a whole profile but since I didn't break it up, what happened is it it did one layer on all four sides in clearing the tool and coming down at the safe um, descent speed took forever. Now, I thought about stopping it and then redoing it and everything, but unfortunately, by the time I realized it, it was probably almost a half hour in because I set it to run, went and did a bunch of other things, came back, and it was not even close. And then that's when I went back and looked at the cam and realized what I had done. And so, anyways, you kind of learn from your mistakes. And, again, I think the biggest thing is to kind of share with you guys, you know, the good, bad, and the ugly. And this was bad. It wasn't ugly. The part actually came out very well. And I want to talk a little bit about the part because uh, just to make sure it engages in here. I mean, it works super what I did also is I took a magic nut and I took it on the lathe, cleaned it up a little bit, uh, tapped a hole out in the back and put one of these magic nuts that's got a grip on it. And so I can, you know, easily do this. And then what I did is I used my uh, indexer. And I got to tell you that spindle indexer on the lathe, I'm going to build a better one. I use it all the time. So what I did is I used it to index and drill these holes. Um, so what I can do is I can then take, uh, you know, um, an Allen wrench, put it in here, and uh, this one probably works a little better. Put it in there, and I can. There's still a little burr I got to clean out in, in this hole, but um, 
this, uh, you know, so I can stick it in here and use the Allen wrench to tighten my chuck down. So I thought this came out as a neat tool. Now, I know aluminum is not the best for chuck tightening, but because of, you know, I'm only using this for coins and, and lightweight stuff. I wouldn't use this on my lathe uh, because it is aluminum and I can't, I, you know, probably if I cinched it down that hard as I would on the lathe, I'd have problems. But since this is just holding it still. So I've used it for a um, number of uh, things like coins already in that. Um, so let's see, I'll show you guys how it works. So that just the lines in there. Then boom, Bob's your uncle. That's tightened in there and I'm ready to go. It doesn't take a lot to tighten in on these coins. Um, so anyways, I thought this was a pretty cool little project and actually should have just took a couple minutes uh, to, to do, but uh, Unfortunately, because of that error in the CAM programming, it took a lot longer. So I just laid around. I, I had a bunch of other things to do. It ran pretty good. Uh, this is really a soft aluminum, probably a little bit softer than if I did it again, I would uh, uh, repeat with. It was just a piece of cheap bar stock that I'd gotten from the Home Depot and uh, for the um, uh, couplers on the mini mill. So I just took a, a leftover piece and... Uh, you know made this because again I got kind of tired of this and I haven't got my other low profile chuck in from China uh, yet so uh, again I've been using this one for a lot of different cutting on the coins here as you've seen in, in uh, prior coin cutting or engraving videos so anyways hopefully you found this interesting maybe inspired you a little bit to come up with something on your own about how easy this is oh the other thing I was going to mention so this this would have been a perfect application for my fourth axis should have I had that set up because I could have just mounted it in the fourth axis and then it would have just milled off all four and uh, you know I'd have been done with it and on top of it I could have had the machine do um, all the actions it could have drilled the holes here for me uh, as well as finished off this surface you know simply by running it out so about the only thing it couldn't have done is center that that hole in the back for the screw and tap it so this is one of the reasons I really want to get the fourth axis on this setup is is a tool like this would be very quickly made on something like that and one of the things maybe I'll get into making and selling these I don't know but uh, again maybe you can take a little bit of inspiration of ideas uh, you know what to make so anyways again hopefully you found it interesting if you did smash that thumbs up button don't forget the bell over there, which means you need to go down, click that bell icon so you're notified of new content when I put it out because I put it out on a regular basis. And hopefully you find this cool and you want to see it. And the other thing is, don't forget Swag Shop's up in the corner up there and a lot of cool maker gear. And we'll see you in the next video where we do something else cool. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.